Hello, my name is Monster Chetwind. I'm an artist and I'm based in Zurich. It's an organic process, maybe, and it creeps up on you and surprises you. I think it's easier maybe to answer if I know when I became a professional artist, and that would be when I committed to education. I would say it's almost a little bit like a time machine culture, that you can experience something 200 years ago, maybe a novel that's written in another period, and it will inspire you to communicate with that novel, the messages, the concepts, the uh, different kinds of excitement that it generates in you. It makes you want to contribute and to answer the questions or to try to answer the questions that were being asked. So it's an exchange with other aspects of culture. They would be quite classical works, really. I like, um, I guess I could say Fuseli, to mention a Swiss artist. And I also really love William Blake. Um, if I was thinking of more contemporary artists, I would uh, maybe reach the 1940s and say the Marx Brothers, Mae West. Um, and then if I'm saying contemporary artists, mm, I don't know if Alexander Calder counts, but I really love Alexander Calder's circus. It means a lot to me and has had a big impact. What determines the value of an artwork is a very tricky question because you're not necessarily making it clear whether you're talking about uh, the art market or the value as a concept. So it's a, maybe they're entangled, but I would say that an artwork is valuable when it's communicating to an audience and when it dances between verbal communication and non-verbal communication. Uh, to struggle with contemporary art, this happens to everyone, professional artists, people who have committed a lifetime to art. So if there's a person who comes to contemporary art and they don't understand anything in the gallery and they feel left out, that instead of feeling rejected, they should feel a little bit of a irritation to know what's going on and they should ask and they should read the press release, ask the people who have put the show on, and really it's to do with a, a lifelong obsession that they're entering into potentially, but feeling like you don't know what is going on is part of it. What I enjoy the most um, would be the social interaction. So if I'm an artist that's locked away in the garret just painting, I really enjoy the connection that I can have with materials and I can make things that didn't exist before just through materials. But at the same time, if I was only working in a garret on my own, I would be very lonely. And so I really enjoy the social um, and intense uh, level of conversation I get to through the art I make. If you're comparing an artwork that is incredibly labor intensive and requires a lifetime of training to have the skill to execute it, this is obviously of worth. It's, it's apparent to the audience that it's of worth. The difference is with conceptual art, the artist is incredibly clever and they've had a lifetime of questioning to come up with the breakthrough that they've had. And with that breakthrough, they will have maybe a one-liner, something that seems simple, but in fact, it is of as worth as something that's taken a lifetime of skill to generate because it's a cerebral achievement. It's very important to understand that in the history of art, it's an exchange down the ages and that humans are continuing this relay and that's the thing that's very exciting to follow. And a world without boundaries would be potentially dangerous for me because I think maybe it's what I'm fighting for or what I'm striving for. So if the world didn't have any boundaries, maybe I would just sit in an easy chair and relax for once. But 
maybe it's a negative answer, maybe I should be more positive and say that if there was no boundaries, I would be a Dionysian imp and perpetually partying.